Ziki Ozuk, from Ozuk Makina Rotary Kiln Services in Turkey, will present to you in this video about, the basic kiln problems and solutions for them, and, on-site tires and rollers ray surfacing. Enjoy watching the video. A rotary kiln, as seen on the video, is the heart of production on site on, on a cement plant. So when we want to calcinate the raw material, it comes to the rotary kiln. So to calcinate uh, the raw material, we need to rotate uh, the material inside the drum, uh, which can the drum diameter can be up to five, six meters. And in length, it can be up to 70, 80 meters. So, located on three piers, what we call tires. And uh, those tires are based on rollers. So, to, to keep this drum uh, well located on tires and rollers, we need some basic geometry information, and uh, we should inspect the situation of the kin based on this geometry. So when we say rotary kin problems, we can talk about misalignment, poor axial movement, roller skis, high bearing temperatures, tire and roller surface wear, shell deformation, high quality unexpected tire shell relations, brake failure, gear failure, and seat problems. So when we go to the kin, Basically, we can check the inner seal, so we can see directly the shape of the eccentricity of the shell there, so how it moves, how it bends, so any material leakage from there, and then uh, we can check any unexpected, such as here, we can see some welding, some holes, and oil uh, lubricant leakage. And uh, this is the basic inspection of what we call the daily kiln walk. So the engineer who is related with the kiln is expected to walk nearby the kiln every day to see what's going on there. What's the change? If you do it daily, then you can compare what's changing from day to day. And again, we can see the tire size, the lateral size of tire, the ground size, the efficiency of them, and the dry barrier the tire and gear hoods and also the sides of the rollers and the hood. So, to inspect the kiln basically is, is a visual thing. But when you go further, you need to get some numbers from the kiln. So make some measures from the kiln. The distance changes from time to time. The diameter of the roller changes from time to time. And it wears. It, it can wear conically, concover convexly, and it affects directly the axial movement of the kiln. So we start telling about the kiln is always running down or always running up. So from beginning, we should understand what is happening in the kiln by numbers, by measures. In, in basic theory, we have a tire and two rollers. And the distance from the center of the tire to the center of the roller is expected to be the same as the distance between rollers. So when we have this, we have a triangle, which is equal on each corner, so between these centers, and the center of this distance of the rollers is expected to be the, to be the visual center of the kin. So, when we have one pier, one tire and two rollers, okay, this is easy. But when we have three of them, keeping them all in the same line is the main purpose of a kill. Engineer is working there. So, it can be as seen the center of the visual tire centers, which is virtual. And the center of the roller centers combine each other. So, it can be sometimes, for example, here as you can see, the middle pier is a little bit up and down, is affecting directly to the shell and forcing. So if the shell is forced, as you can see here, up and down, and then we will have some failures. It can, it 
It can come from the tide, it can come from the diet, from the shed. And again, when we talk peer by peer, okay, we can measure, as you see in the photo, is a bit total station, looking directly to the roller center. We can measure the distance between rollers, the diameter of the roller, the diameter of the tire. So the operating angles as an echo, when it is echo, we expect it to be 60 degrees between rollers. But it can be more or less. So when it is more or less, it means it is lower. The tire center is lower or higher. It also means that it is trying to carry more or less load, depending on the situation. So next, okay, the rotary key is located in its position in a slope. And with this slope, let's say here, 3.5%, with this slope can be distributed to, is it the slope of the kin and the slope of the rollers, each rollers, and slope of the each chassis, which is holding the roller. So when we have measured all the slopes independent ways, so when we compare what's going on in our kin, for example here, the general slope of the kin is 3.5%, but some rollers have different, so that's why sometimes we need shims under the bearings. Next, the shell. Okay, till now we were talking about rollers which is located directly on the concrete. And then we talked about the tire which is located over the rollers. But all these uh, rollers and tires actually there to carry the shell. So when we have the shell, here we have the section one, let's say the inlet section. So in this section, every line is telling 10 millimeters, the center of the shell and the shape, the red line is the shape of the shell. So when we go from inlet, step by step, you can see the shell shape is changing because of uh, poor refractory, because of poor material on the shell because of some uh, extra loads there or because of tires and you can be, it can be any reason in this section. So when we go step by step, uh, all scan and the center of the rotation and the run out and the concave and convex places and the eccentricity amount. So we go step by step and when you do all from inlet to discharge, we have a map of the shell. Here, when you say, see some red, that's minus 25 mm. When you see green, this is plus 25. That means we have concave and convex on, on our shell. This is expected because of gravity, because of the load, because of uh, the distance between peers. We, can, we are expecting this, but we have a tolerance for this. Sometimes you are talking about replacing the shell section. So how you decide it? why we need shell replacement. So this is a basically a map after lots of laser scans and lots of measures. And when you have this map, so it's easy to understand where to do this shell replacement and why to do it. Next, when we combine all these information in one page, we can talk about the shell temperature map, the temperature, and the runoff, the eccentricity information, and rotation centers x and y axis. So here you can easily see the discharge seal has around 5 mm eccentricity. So that's why you see some leaks on the seal at discharge. So that's easily seen here. So when we create a 3D video here, we can understand what's this. We are talking about the discharge seal here. You see how it grows. So this is, this is again from gravity and you can see the color. So from another angle, you see so you can easily talk about shell replacement or shell rebuilding here. So when we have this measurement on the side, visually you understand what is going on there. And it's very easy to decide uh, to replace or rebuild the shell by this visual. Next, we can start talking about the axial movement of the gear. You know, uh, when you put all the rollers parallel to the tires, and we call it neutral. The kin will want to go down. Why? Because it has a slope. So the amount of slope 
will eventually force the king down here. But to stop, when we let the king to go downhill all the way, that means we will have a king which forces the trust road. And we are trying to push the king up from all the load coming from the trust road. To help the trust road, we should skip the rollers a little bit. So by the help of the rollers, we will push the king uphill because it wants to go downhill. So we try to understand this by here you can see the parts which is complicated, the contact area and non-contact areas, the temperatures. And then so we open the covers from the bearings and see the gap between the truss disc and the bearing. So when we combine all these videos, open all the covers, you see there is a gap there and we can sign here. So we have a gap there. To decide with this where to skip, make the alignment. So we make the alignment and start to align the chain to go uphill by to help the trust road. Or sometimes the king is going up more, so we should regulate the king to stay in the middle more and to reduce the force on the trust road. Next, we can talk about sometimes, for example, let's say middle pier is located five millimeter on one side, not up or down, one side. So that means one of the rollers will have more load in a rotation, half of the rotation Let's say the right roller will have all the load, and we will see one roller not rotating. And in the second half of the turn, we will have the other roller having all the load, and one roller is not rotating. So to understand this, we are measuring the load on the rollers, and the shaft, we call it roller shaft dynamic bending. So we measure the bending of the shaft to understand if there is any change in the rotation or not. So how is how the load is distributed between rollers and the wobbling of the tire? You know the tire door sometimes a little bit more. Sometimes the shell under tire has more bends than expected. And in this situation, we try to understand how the tire is wobbling. And depending on this wobble, we try to understand, to estimate what's happening under the tire, what the situation of shell, and decide. And then we were talking about the truss roller, the, the pressure of the truss roller, the shape of the truss roller. You see, if you have more load here, that means it will wear out more quickly. And when we come to the gear, okay, we said that uh, the tire and the shell on inside the tire is located over the rollers, and we try to measure the load uh, on the roller. So try to understand the bending of the shaft on the roller, but. More easily, we can inspect the good clearance between pinion and girl gear. So here you can see when it comes yellow, it's less and more, and when it comes red, red is getting more. So a sample video here, go there, and then inspecting the behavior of the pinion and girl gears. So you see some false bottom in here. <laughs> Contact. In this situation, you can see the root clearance is less significant, but that's not important. Despite this, you can have some vibration coming from the girl here. That means you have a false bottom here, you see. So the remaining 10 millimeter will be nothing because your girl here is sitting in one section. So here you see the root clearance increasing, and you can see even on the video it's coming to. 14, 15, going more, 25 on the way up, so it's coming to top position, 25. The root clearance, this is one rotation of your gear. And reducing fastly down, and you see the gap is visible here, and to a dangerous area, Oops, you see the oil coming up. So this is 3.1. So in one rotation, the root clearance here is between 3 and 25 millimeter. When it comes to 3, that means hitting the button. So very dangerous for your girl here. When it goes up to 25, that means you need the contact between pinion and girl gear is reducing and you will have more load to rotate the kin. 
So when it comes to this situation, it can be because of the shell bending, it can be because of uh, the springs under the girt gear, or just because of some problems right over the tooth. Next, the shell. Okay, we said uh, the shell can have plastic or elastic deformations. When it has plastic, for example, bricks fall down, and uh, one area, a certain area of the shell, had become uh, 300, 400 degree or more, and that shape changed on the shell, so we call it the plastic, because it cannot change again, it deformed, or some bending. But some, uh, sometimes, we have a, not every time, we have ovality, due to gravity, because the shell extends, flexes, we call it ovality, but how much? Because when you have ovality, that means the shell is opening and closing, and in between the bricks are opening and closing, and some material going in, and this is uh, causing some uh, cracks on the bricks. So you will have some refractory problems after that. So you, if you have this ovality in the limit, so that's what that is why we measure the ovality of the shell uh, on the side. So when you have higher unexpected ovality. So you will have some more brick failures, some more uh, tire bore problems, depending on this one. So that is the brick compressor to the shell finish, and then the brick failure, and then you see that's the reagent of the jet coming. So the last, the tire and roller concave and convex fashion. Sometimes the rollers are worn out, as you see. So, so this is affecting directly to uh, thin alignment. So, so you see the force coming from tire to floor, and then you need machining and grinding of the tire. So this is very heavy, it's not easy to carry the tire out and machine it, so this should be done on site during production. This is in your RPM, in your production speed. So this is a sample photo of grinding, and this is a sample video. So, this is a rotary cable with diameter of the tire is 7 meter. So started machining. So two different processes, machining with latitude and grinding. So you see, like normal latitude, the material is thinned out. So, uh, for example, you may have conical wear to 3 millimeters, that's all cleaned out, and then grinding comes. So this is the surface quality difference before and after. That's a sample photo, and you have some pitting, some materials, some concave, convex. We do it on site at 3.5 RPM on production, during production. <coughs> so, the basic adjustment room, and then after machining, we again check the, check the latest final situation and make the alignment. So, for alignment, as you see, some sample photos, some precautions. Then uh, with dial gates, we control and make the alignment of the thing. 